in this unit we're gonna talk about some of the classical more historical convolutional network architectures and also some more recent state-of-the-art convolutional network architectures this is the picture that i've showed in the beginning where um, we can see that in the last 10 years performance on this image net classification problem has significantly increased or the errors have significantly dropped while at the same time um, that the network depth has increased and this is a a common trend uh, in these days that deeper networks lead to better generalization provided enough training data and compute and today nearly all state-of-the-art networks for image applications all state-of-the-art networks that use images as input use convolutional layers so this is really the dominant dominating paradigm today it all started sort of with Lenet. <clears throat> Lenet is a network architecture here in its fifth version that has been developed by Jan Lecun, the um, father of modern convolutional networks. And it's a very simple and shallow, still relatively shallow network architecture. It has just two convolutional layers, two pooling layers and two fully connected layers but it at the time has achieved state-of-the-art accuracy on MNIST um, that was prior to the ImageNet era. There was no large-scale ImageNet data set available. Everybody was training on MNIST and testing their algorithms on MNIST. So here you can see the architecture of this network. It uh, was using uh, convolutions on subsampling to reduce uh, the spatial dimensions and then fully connected layers in the end to do the final classification of these small little images of digits. Then in 2012, which is often taken as the year where um, the breakthrough started, this was really the, the breakthrough was because of a, a clever combination of several ideas like ReLUS and Dropout and data augmentation plus for the first time, it has been demonstrated that using GPU training, these network architectures can actually be applied to data sets that are bigger than MNIST, data sets like ImageNet, and produce state-of-the-art results on these data sets. So this AlexNet architecture 2012 had eight layers. You can see the layers here. And it was um, distributed across two GPUs just because at the time GPUs were um, still very small and had only three gigabytes of memory. So it was really a, a memory problem. Um, and uh, we already see this, this trend of feature channels increasing with depth and spatial resolution decreasing throughout the network. So it was a combination of uh, convolutional layers and max pooling layers um, and ReLU activations. It was using dropout and data augmentation to regularize uh, training. And this really triggered this, this result of seeing that deep learning actually works outside these restricted, small scale, rather simplistic machine learning data sets, but works in the real world and data sets that the computer vision community is interested in, was really triggering the uh, deep learning revolution. Then in uh, 2015, so there were a couple of steps in between, so I'm, I'm jumping ahead slightly. The VGG network architecture was proposed. Um, this is the architecture I've already shown to you. It, it uses free by free convolutions everywhere. There was key, so here that was the key difference from this network, which still had uh, many more parameters also because it was using larger filter sizes here in the beginning. Um, so it showed that using just free by free convolutions everywhere has the same or even better expressiveness with fewer parameters. Because for instance, free free by free layers have the same receptive field as one seven by seven layer, but they have less parameters, you can easily show that. And they have at the same time more nonlinearities because there's three layers, not just one layer. So they've shown that it's actually better to um, use 
layers, convolutional layers with smaller kernels. And that's also the dominating paradigm still today to use these small and simple layers and rather um, create deeper networks. Then of course training becomes a problem because of vanishing and exploding gradient problems. But if you can train them well, then these models can generalize better because they have fewer parameters. So they show that deeper networks with smaller kernels are better and they propose two different variants, a one variant with 16 and one variant with 19 layers. <clears throat> In uh, 2015, um, offers from Google proposed Inception Net or Google Net, also sometimes called, which is a network with 22 layers, so it's even a little bit more deep than VGG, and it's it's very efficient. It has 27 times less parameters than VGG because it doesn't use fully connected. Um, it doesn't use uh, like this these large fully connected layers in the end but very quickly narrows down to the softmax operation. It also has a couple of other innovations. For instance, it, it uses these um, uh, inception blocks here. You can see that multiple, this, this block here reappears multiple times throughout the network. And what this block does is it, it uses different, um, I have it here, it uses different types of convolutions different, with different filter sizes, one by one, three by three, five by five, and also max pooling all in parallel, and then concatenates the results, kind of an ensemble uh, that leads to better performance. What it also does is it has multiple heads. So it, because it's, it's very difficult to train such deep networks, at least at the time, um, if, you if you just back propagate gradients all from the end here, um, what they did is they, they used some intermediate heads that are not used in the end for the final classification, but they were just also trying to solve the same problem for backpropagating gradients and helping the gradient flow through the network. Um, and then they are using um, one by one convolutions in some variants of the network to keep the efficiency high. One by one convolutions can be used to alter or change or reduce the number of feature channels um, without actually changing anything else, changing the spatial resolution or the receptive field, just changing the spatial, uh, the, the number of feature channels. And they were doing this multiple times throughout the architecture. Um, in particular, in, in cases where, for instance, max pooling um, was, was keeping, or that there's no way you can define max pooling <clears throat> and at the same time res reduce resolution. So they did this immediately afterwards to uh, reduce the number of feature channels, sorry, to reduce the number of feature channels and um, or effectively reduce the number of parameters of the following layers. Then in 2016 was another real breakthrough, ResNet, which is like underlying most of the state-of-the-art architectures today in image classification. In uh, ResNet, with ResNet, it was possible for the first time to train very deep networks up to 152 layers. And it's a very simple and easy network architecture, as you can see here, with a very regular structure with only three by three convolutions. Um, it uses dilated convolutions for downsampling, and really, these ResNet like architectures are dominating today. And the reason why they are so powerful is that for the first time they allow for training these deep networks. <clears throat> um, so what is the reason behind? Well, um, what the authors have realized is that if you have a network with 15 layers uh, or 16 layers like VGG and you add 10 more layers, then the performance actually drops and it's not an overfitting problem. And that was surprising. So despite it's not being an overfitting problem, adding more layers drops performance, despite the fact that if I would just use identity layers, I just use the identity for all these 10 additional layers, I would get the same performance of the original 16 layer model that performs better than the 26 layer model. And that's surprising. And the authors um, realized that the main problem is in optimization, is problem of, of vanishing gradients. And so what they did as a change to the network is that they introduced this, these residual blocks here where 
instead of uh, just a, a standard feed forward um, layers, they introduced these skip connections here <clears throat> where these layers just had to predict the residual. So the, the skip con the, the, these connections, these, these layers here just have to predict the residual to the previous value of the input. And now of course it becomes much easier to realize the identity. The model basically starts with the or close to the identity. And so the problem is much easier to train and it doesn't suffer from this problem that adding more layers um, very quickly leads to the problem of um, um, uh, allowing the model not training anymore. <laughs> and so this was really key and, and these residual connections can be found throughout many, many neural network architectures today. So here's an overview over the complexity of the different network architectures. You can see that VGG is, so what you see here is basically um, the size of the network in terms of the disk size and the operations that are needed for executing it and the accuracy on ImageNet. In this case is top one accuracy. You can see that VGG19 is really a heavy network, it has many parameters, is, is very slow. Um, on the other hand, <clears throat> Google Net, for instance, is um, much faster and smaller, but it, it doesn't perform as well. And then there is this um, Inception and ResNet architectures that are somewhere in between uh, combining different ideas, um, leading to better performance with smaller and faster networks. And then one final architecture I want to show you is this unit architecture that um, has been popularized um, in this SegNet paper that I've shown before, but also in this unit paper that was first applied to biomedical image segmentation actually, but is uh, cited uh, a lot today as it's, it's the default unit architecture that is taking an input and producing an image uh, or a pixel level output like semantic segmentation by combining uh, downscaling with uh, upscaling and uh, skip connections here in gray.